Good morning and happy April Fools, everybody. It's Wake Up Missoula time. I'm your host, Scott Ramp. Um, coming to you live from Channel 189 in the afternoon. It's pre-tape, so bear with me. Um, so uh, before we begin, I have a little bit of MCAT news to tell you guys. We got a nice letter from uh, a viewer here on MCAT, Channel 189-190. Uh, yes, we get viewers still. <laughs> uh, it's just a note uh, to let you know how much I enjoy having Classic Art Showcase again. Well, thanks, Teresa, for uh, sending that letter to us, and we appreciate it. Of course, you know, for the last couple years, we've been uh, airing uh, Free Speech TV, NASA TV, as kind of like plugins for our channel. And uh, we brought back Classic Art Showcase, which has bumped a couple other programs and moved some things around. For the most part, it's nice to have a nice artistic reprieve during the day for folks uh, to enjoy, you know, rather than watch some of the uh, more controversial stuff that uh, we happen to stream on our channel as well. But let's talk about more controversy. Uh, joining us this morning is a report that Ukraine has attacked Russian soil. Uh, being on the defensive for more than six weeks, Ukraine has escalated this conflict further. Russian news outlets have been referring this to invasion as a special operation, uh, but this bombing of an oil refinery 20 miles inland from the Ukrainian border has Ukrainian officials saying it might have been them. Um, as if tensions can be higher, coming out of Poland visiting with the Ukrainian refugees and other military personnel, President Joe Biden basically passed the point of no return when he announced a regime change out of Russia. This was coming out of talks with Poland, bordering Ukraine, and speaking with the people who have fled. I get it. People have lost so much because of, of tyranny can make anyone shed a tear. But Biden is playing a dangerous game by saying the quiet part out loud that Putin cannot remain in power. And he doubled down and people were asking him and stuff like that. And a lot of, of uh, US officials have been saying, it's like, don't listen to this guy. And so it's 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 a very precarious kind of situation that we're in also as well. And you think that Russia would be uh, better off with Putin? Sure, yes, but that would create a power vacuum. Uh, you know, in the looks like the country, if they were, if they were to happen, and the happening would be anything less than messy. So it'll be a mess, just like that last sentence I said. Uh, these statements will be used by Russian governments. TV to whip up the Russian people against the Western and the United States. And so that propaganda is going to be pushed even further. Turkey has been a meeting place, a, a, a neutral location for Russia and Ukrainian envoys to talk peace. And it, it seems to be very touch and go for the most part. There's a lot of things happening, a lot of moving parts as well um, this week as well, even with the uh, information coming in that uh, Russian troops are uh, uh, kind of like regrouping. So they're, they're not necessarily retreating, but they're regrouping to uh, come up with another strategy before potentially taking Kyiv. Um, some, even some Ukrainians have decided to go back to Ukraine after about uh, six weeks um, of people just kind of trying to get out, refugees, all that stuff. At most, Ukraine wants a ceasefire and would be willing to give up any Western help and not join NATO or EU at the very least. Um, but at the very most, they want to uh, make sure that Russia turns tail and leave. They don't want to give up any more land. Uh, they, like whatever uh, Crimea or anything like that, they're perfectly fine with trying to keep what the status quo was before the Russian invasion. And that's what they want to keep, make sure, and all that stuff. It's like moving out of your abusive boyfriend's house. You can call the police all you want, but unless you have something to protect yourself, who knows what he's capable of. Escalation on top of escalation, and nuclear war is actually on the table. And this, even going back to all the touch and go parts during the Cold War, we had JFK, Reagan, and other presidents who took a hard line on Russia during the uh, Cold War. Uh, the thought on everyone's mind was, Oh, uh, we should bomb them before they bomb us. And it was pure luck and fear that kept us safe for all those years. It's like you have two people sitting by the button and you're asking yourselves, like, the other person hasn't pushed the button yet. I'm, uh, why should I? And I think a lot of ways we desensitize ourselves uh, by getting involved yet again in foreign affairs while not weighing in the consequences of our arduous ideologies. I listened to stories on NPR about introverts and extroverts and uh, they did a whole section about Americans have their own category. Uh, I also listened to a comedy podcast like Bad Friends with Bobby Lee and they were talking about race and they, one of the things that really kind of was very poignant about it is that they have a gripe with white Americans and how they tend to be more willing to get involved in other people's business and have some kind of a savior complex. Anyways, America's Savior Complex came out in a proposed $8 tr trillion dollar military budget. Perhaps we're going to, uh, too far with our involvement. We're paying, uh, we're paying to arm the Ukrainians just so we don't have to get our hands dirty. There's just a lot of moving parts. And speaking of dirty, uh, one of the major things that has been happening in the U.S. as well is that uh, 
Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas's wife has been investigated with links attempting to overturn the 2020 election. Ginny Thomas sent texts to ch then Chief of Staff Mark Meadows that he had to overturn this election. These texts have been a smoking gun uh, in an already January 6th committee geared towards turning over every rock in terms of everything surrounding January 6th. This story, however, is a major, uh, is major because of her uh, connection to Clarence Thomas, who may have, uh, may have to recuse himself in the manner of January 6th, uh, but in the past, uh, the law could recognize that a married couple with two different individuals with a separation. Hence, if your partner murdered someone without, other no without the other's knowledge, uh, you cannot be persecuted. So it's, it's very, <clears throat> all right, that's a bad example. <laughs> but those lines uh, became blurry in a storm of finger pointing with real life consequences on the highest judicial branch, the Supreme Court. This is the highest court and many justices never uh, recuse themselves anyways. Uh, and speaking of something who should have recused themselves, the Oscar slap. Let's, let's turn gears all together because this has been basically in the circles of the A-list celebrities and so therefore the rest of us normal people have to hear all about it. Love makes you crazy according to the Oscar winning acceptance speech but maybe he shouldn't have initially laughed at the G.I. Jane 2 joke uh, when um, Chris Rock poked fun at Jacob Pinkett Smith's hair. Um, there's a lot of footage of him laughing at the joke, uh, of Will Smith laughing at the joke, and then cutting back to Chris Rock. So whatever happened between uh, him laughing and him walking up on stage is still kind of unknown, but I'm pretty sure it had to do a lot with, like, he was laughing and then he had to save face in front of his wife. So everything else kind of at this point seems like a lot of noise and kind of unnecessary uh, uh, going on there, but I think that was just my interpretation of it. Uh, moving on, uh, Missoula spoke about how they wanted to pay for sidewalks moving forward in Missoula is infrastructure. So they, so far th as the money comes through a grant opportunities for development to leverage infrastructure through bonds, recent standards for uh, paying for sidewalks have become different and different ways of uh, approaching this. Just recently the city approved a sidewalk for Eaton Street in Missoula in which the residents in the area would pay $86,000 of the bonds of a potential hundreds of thousands for the initial project in the special improvement districts that were created back in the day. So Missoula used to have um, SIDs and many people are still paying for the SIDs because they're special improvement districts so the neighborhood pays X amount of dollars per month in their uh, their property taxes, uh, or actually more like city county taxes. Um, and then on top of that, uh, they, they pay for that every month for the next 20 years, created their sm special district bond for that. And so that was kind of like the old way of doing it. One of the things um, that they kind of uh, moved from is TIF funding, which became very controversial because in a lot of ways we're giving tax breaks to uh, businesses and private development so they could build a sidewalks. Um, in the, um, and that was kind of like the kind of the moving forward with that and trying to figure out how we can be like, oh, well, let's just double dip. Since you're already constructing a building there, you might as well build the good infrastructure of the roads and we'll give you a good tax break for it as well. So that was kind of like the, a Missoula solution to kind of removing those kind of special improvement districts, which basically means like we're going to tax the section that's going to be building the sidewalk in that section. We're not going to tax uh, somebody on the north side so that p so people on the south side could have a proper infrastructure. So that's kind of what they did with special improvement districts and then they evolved it to TIF funding. A couple years back I took a tour of the Scott Street. I've talked about this plenty of times. Uh, so the Scott Street Phillips Streets, it's near little school neighborhoods just south of the tracks. I have seen sidewalks in some areas and nothing in others. Some sidewalks just kind of end at the next house and it's kind of a mess in terms of sidewalks close to the road versus boulevards. So and it's, it's kind of like going in and out of roads and just a lot of stuff. And this was basically the time of the pre-pandemic. In 2019, the cost of building the sidewalk was about $68 for a linear foot. Uh, and the cost of uh, costs have since increased, of course, with all the everything it costs more for sure. And a mile of sidewalk back in 2019 would cost about $800,000 for a single mile on average. And Missoula members of city council, Daniel Carlino, doesn't think the city should decide if an area needs to, a sidewalk without the people's consent. However, coming out of SIDs and Hillview Ways a couple back, there were property owners up the Hillview Way and they were not happy with the road that was being built with the special improvement district of that particular area. Hence, they uh, went through litigation to sue the city and be like, hey, we don't actually live in the property that we own. Why the heck do we have to pay 
for this. So they came up with the deal. It's like, okay, so if you do decide to develop or whoever develops on that site will have to uh, recur the, uh, the taxes uh, accumulated from the site as well. So that's a very weird kind of deal. So um, many of the folks who, of course, own the property were just like, I'm perfectly fine with just like um, having a dirt road because, you know, a lot of the people who own that area didn't have any say or care if the road was paved or not. So uh, the question posed by Missoula Current is who should pay for the sidewalks? Those who want them in the short, but let's talk a little bit more about that. Some responsibility would be put on the homeowner and less on the people of Missoula. As ideas would create a created to prevent, why should people on the South Hills pay for sidewalks on the north side debate? Uh, Carlino, uh, city council, said that the city should pay for it outright since they seem to be more interested in infrastructure uh, and connectivity in the long term. Uh, regardless, the longer we wait to build infrastructure improvements, the cost of supplies and development will go up. Also, in, uh, if the homeowner pays for the sidewalks, then they have to keep the then they have to keep it clear of snow and hazardous vegetation, otherwise they can incur fines as a result. So it's not really a good incentive for a lot of property owners to have sidewalks in front of their house, right? So this is uh, going to be interesting, and uh, SIDs were controversial, and as, uh, as they went in 2019, TIF funding and leveraging developers have been proven to help the rapid development we've seen in the last few years. So that's what I have to say about what's kind of happening in and around the news today. I have a city council, so I'm going to be talking even more about Missoula news later on the show. But for right now, here's a promo made by our very own teen, um, uh, Ruben, who worked at our summer camps last week, and he made a short MCAT promo. So without further ado, here's this. professional nerd and MCAT employee. Well, I'm not sure if I'm actually considered an employee, but I am on their payroll, so I think I get to speak for myself. I love MCAT for the reason that I get to do whatever I want, which sometimes goes very well and other times turns out like this video. Incredibly poorly. So why do we need MCAT? Well, Missoula has been a building community for a while and MCAT has really been there to help us out by taking care of our children on Saturday so we can do religious things. I have gotten to learn to play the piano. Then MCAT helped me get my YouTube channel to a whopping 10 subscribers. One thing I've learned from MCAT is that all you need to succeed in life is film room and a sense of humor. Or at least we don't want to play the piano. At MCAT, we have come up with some of the sensational hits that you might have seen in blockbuster theaters, like Alien But With a Cat and Nature Guy 2 and Shawshank Redemption, but with the cat. And Major Guy 3. And... Okay. Where am I? I? Hey, so, how long have you been working at MCAT? What's MCAT? Where are we? Just answer the questions. How long have you been with MCAT? Uh, uh... A few seconds, I guess. Where is it? Are we at MCAT? Are we at MCAT? How long have you been working at MCAT? Uh, uh, um, 15 years. How old are you? Uh, uh, that's first. How old are you? I'm 16. Then how have you been working at MCAT since you were one year old? I, I lied. I'm sorry. I just, I want to get out of here. I want to see my family. So yeah, like how long have you been coming to MCAT? Um, since the fourth grade. <laughs> how long is that? Um, see, I was probably eight, eight six or years nine. ago. You were, yeah, because you were in. No, first grade. Why did I say fourth? Uh, first so grade. You're in so I was grade now. Yeah. 
So like nine years ago? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, and so what do you like about it? Um, it's it's a chance to uh, to just record the stuff that you want to do in a setting where you can do it. Uh, whereas if you're recording like a home film or anything else, there'd be a lot of production involved. You'd have to buy the cameras. Um, you get a chance to collaborate with other people, which uh, is really fun. That's how um, plenty of my shorts were made. Um, what what is your favorite movie? That you've uh, the Nature Guy trilogy. So, yeah, no, that's all I have to ask. Piano! Yeah, so that's MCAT for you. I hope that you enjoyed this video, and I hope that you enjoy being with MCAT. I sure have, and I am glad to see this new generation come in. Hey guys, welcome back from the white void. Um, it's <laughs> We're going to be talking about some movies that are coming out this weekend. It is finally time for some of these movies that you're just going to be like, is this a joke? Is this an April Fool's joke? But no, it's Friday and just happens to fall upon April Fool's. It's Morbius. After, a, after the big box office win for Spider-Man comes yet another superhero so confident they'd make bank that they moved their release date after Spider-Man started streaming. What were we talking about? Jared Leto, gross. He, and he portrays a guy who is bitten by a radioactive vampire bat and becomes a living vampire most nerds will know as Morbius. More like Lesbius. Uh, not, not to be, uh, uh, even I hate myself for saying that, but something happens and he uses his powers and his bloodlust to kill the bad guys um, who deserve it. And um, he is a tortured hero only an arduous guy like Jared Leto can portray. Up next, we have The Contractor. I am The Contractor. This movie, I assume, is about a contract killer who gets in way over his head when the job itself goes wrong, and perhaps the job is trying to kill him. Um, this will probably have him find out who contracted him are the ones who are trying to get him killed. A twist more common than you think, realistically, uh, to the plot, he's more of a, a pretty boy ex-marine who takes a job that is more than just a job. It's personnel. Personnel. Um, secret badass and mild-mannered man who gets in way over his head, also with secret uh, military training and all that stuff. Um, this isn't it. Huh. I must have... Yeah, the contractor. I wonder why it's there, but it's not. Okay, moving on. Uh, <laughs> you won't be alone. Uh, welcome to the world of witches. Uh, Welp, here we go. This witch -a woman is cursed with the spirit of a witch when she is kidnapped and forced to be host to the witch. Numi Rapace, fresh off the Lamb movie, stars in this film that will make you think she's a good actress, but the source material of possession and social isolation can make anyone crazy. Uh, the movie, I assume is about a town is just as crazy as, not, uh, if not crazier, and she's just trying to live her best witchy woman life, and you have to, ha all, and all you have, have is a gal to judge this movie for what exactly is. Random, shaking, cameras, and sound editing to make you feel uncomfortable. All right, those are the movies that are coming out. I need to make sure I don't accidentally pop this open. One, two, three, four, five. All right, cool. So up next we have a, Ep new episode of Dub and Stuff. I don't know why I called it an episode. It's just another segment. Uh, it's from the John Wayne movie. I've been on a John Wayne 1930s kick for some time now. I'll probably forget about it next week when I do something just random. So uh, here is Two Fists of Justice from the 1930s. All right, horses. Watch the house. Watch the farm. <laughs> 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 Will you guys stop making fun of me? I'm coming. A knock, a knock, a knock. I, I heard knock, you. A knock, a knock. I'm coming. Open the door you, you, right now. All right. You better guys got to quiet down now. Well, we're here hey, to do an intervention oh, or whatever you call it, ma'am. 
Um, that's exactly what it's called. It's an intervention. It's when somebody has a problem and then we all have to confront well, them because it's hurting the rest of us. You heard the lady. I feel like you're interrupting me. You're not really listening to me. Well, all I heard was that Bert had some kind of, uh, anime problem. Well, it's not just that. Why can't you let Bert old be? Well, it's just that we only have one account and he uses it for the main TV. Well, looks like we got a monopolizer on our hands. Perhaps, uh, make it a password so he can't log on to your accounts? Old Stewie from down the lane, he's half as smart as Bert and, and he knows how to respect the hierarchy of the main TV. Well, we can't talk about it now. He's coming. Uh? Oh, I'll grab my gun. Oh, wait just a minute there, Sheriff. Well, uh, let's get... G <laughs> Hi. What's going on in here? How's it going? Um, what's going on? Uh, why are you guys all... I'm gonna be straightforward with you, Bert. This is a intervention. You mean like the one on MTV? Yeah, I reckon you know all about it. Well, I, um... Is this... About my anime addiction? Because I'm down to five shows now. <laughs> it's more than Well, that. this is a very sensitive matter. You shouldn't be talking down to him like that. Um, well, thanks, bud. Interventions come from a place of love, not hardship. Well, thank you kindly. I really appreciate that. Truth is, I've been looking for an excuse to stop. Well, it's nice that we can come to an understanding, Bert. Well, tell me what I'm supposed to do in this situation. You know, it's surprisingly easy. Less. Just less. You need to do less. That's all you need to do. Oh. Uh, well, that seems pretty easy. Huh. You know, you could have told me one-on-one -on -one you didn't need to bring the sheriff. Well, technically, he's off-duty, and you don't really have to worry about him too much. And besides, it's a slow day. Bert, you hurt a lot of people with your monopolizing of the big TV. Ah, come on, there's no immediate change. Why don't we just throw him in the keel hall? Well, well that's no... This isn't about nautical terms, and we're, we're not on a boat. We're on a farm. Um, Those kind of terminologies That's don't what you guys here. are complaining about? Well, I think the lady has a point there. Perhaps we should uh, change the subject back to uh, talking about what uh, the real issue is. Um, what's the real issue? Well, that I'm monopolizing the big TV. No, it's about your, uh, anime cartoon thing. Not, not the big TV, not monopolizing I told it. you not to approach it at a selfish angle. It's not the uh, way. Uh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. You're not gonna let me stop. I'm gonna watch whatever I want. This is my account, and I'm gonna change the password. And then, n no one's gonna watch the big TV, because they won't even have access- Don't do this, Bert. I share an account with you, too. Oh, you do, too? Yeah, I do, too. What is going on here? I tried being generous with my streaming account. And this is what I have to show for it. I'm out of here. Don't chase me. Oh, let's get him before he changes it. Get out of the way. Oh, you're in the way. We gotta, gotta stop him. Let's get him, boys. Let's, let's get him. kill him. Let's kill him. All right, let's oh, come kill on, him. Come on, boys. Let's go get him. I don't think let's you understand him. how this works. Yeah, learn cowboy terms. Well, that guy's sure in trouble as soon as John Wayne comes around. I tell you what, uh, here's a fun trivia for you. John Wayne's grandson is a, a stunt double who actually wears the Mandalorian suit in The Mandalorian. Think about it. All right, moving on. <laughs> we have some city council uh, report for you guys. One of the things I want to start off uh, talking about is we had a very thick week of city council and committee meetings. Admin and finance was over four hours long. I, I'm going to be giving you the cliff notes of that. I won't have any clips for you guys for that particular meeting, but I, I think I did a pretty good job just kind of giving you a, an idea of what it's going to be about. But of course, the last couple of weeks, the public comments have been eyeing Rogers security and have felt uncomfortable with their fully, fully suited up security uh, teams at the local shelter and the temporary safe outdoor spaces. Joe, a Missoula resident, is talking about Roger's security, um, and this is what he had to say. This council has taken the talking point that hiring Rogers International is a method of harm reduction and part of a transformative justice policy which Missoula is undertaking. I actually love that. I'm a big transformative justice guy. I think that's the future. It's a little weird that we have decided that uh, Rogers International are the people to do that. I just do not, that does not make much sense to me. However, 
under that guise, I would expect this council would have done the due diligence when they were looking to sign a contract with Rogers International. And one of my expectations would be that all of the employees of Rogers International should have been going through training for things like mental health crisis intervention, de-escalation, harm reduction, those sorts of basic skills that they would need to operate effectively and safely and with compassion and decency towards our most vulnerable community members. Okay, and so that was Joe with public comment. I also have a follow-up with uh, Daniel Carlino, city council member. And so far, a few residents have spoken in concern, uh, but during the presentation from last, uh, I covered the Committee of the Whole, Public Safety and Health. They looked to create, uh, they used Roger Security in Operation Shelter. Daniel Carlino, city council, tells us of his first-hand experience of, uh, of working with uh, Roger's International. Um, I was luckily, lucky enough to get to do a ride along with them on Friday, where we also toured the authorized campsite in, in Missoula. And um, we would go around and um, get to talk to people that are living there. And I asked a lot of the residents um, what they need for the authorized campsite what to, um, to help like get, meet their basic needs and help um, with whatever goals they're working on. And they wanted showers. They wanted water sources, heat sources, electricity. Um, and I think that's what ARPA funds could use, could be used for and also for housing for, for people who need it in Missoula. Um, and after talking to the Rogers owner and some of the workers there as we were doing the ride along, um, it became pretty clear that, um, that the owner is willing to have public transparency and public oversight if we add it to the contract and if we make it happen. But currently, um, we don't have a very, we don't have very much public transparency or oversight with our private security firm that the city contracts with Rogers International. So I think if we're going to have people who have the ability to use force on our neighbors and who work with the most vulnerable populations in Missoula and are able to carry around weapons, I think they should have public oversight. Okay, so uh, first and foremost, uh, of course I mentioned this many times before, is that uh, the library also has their own security firm that they work with Phoenix uh, Security, and one of the things that they uh, did with, within their contract is being able to uh, prevent them from having guns. That's one of the things is like, they was like, okay, we want security, but we don't want to have any guns. We just want to have a presence here. So in a lot of ways, that makes a lot of sense, but like I said, this is a, a, a a kind of like a, a new program, Operation Shelter is, uh, as I said it before, has been a, a reaction to how they handled the situation on the Broadway Island last year. And so they wanted to uh, be in a way where they could um, um, have more control. And also um, they did a report a couple weeks ago through the Public Safety and Health and uh, the Favarella Center was very happy about the uh, amount of uh, calls that weren't being um, doing but that weren't tying up the uh, the 911 the Missoula Police Department and in a lot of ways if you even think about it from this angle uh, Rogers Security Internet Rogers International Security they are a private uh, firm in which the city can choose whether or not to uh, disband them and just get rid of them outright um, not like you know if it's a police officer and then there's it's very intertwined within the city government so in a lot of ways this has a lot more control within the city uh, as they are paying for private contractors and they can pull out if they want to do so as well so um, think about it you can control the security you cannot control the homeless uh, there are bigger issues at play that I can get into but I'll leave you with that uh, Missoula's cost of living has gone up, duh, and wages have not been able to catch up regardless of some places offering a $15 minimum wage. Some places even uh, jumping up constantly just to kind of keep up with uh, some people who are just constantly uh, dipping out of their jobs. Talking about Westside Park in the city slash low school property is Heidi West of C Oh man, I'm just like throwing it all over the place. Uh, sorry. So I, I'm thinking, so wow, I, I those notes I probably should have thrown to a little bit later. Sorry, I'm just uh, thinking out loud. Okay, so let's talk about the Westside Park. L you know, uh, the Westside Park is at Lowell School. That whole area is uh, basically uh, a big area of, of infrastructure improvement and development needs. And one of the things that they're improving is the playground at Lowell School, which is interconnected between uh, MCPS schools and the city of Missoula in their Parks and Rec Department. And here is Heidi West talking about the end of their uh, old school playground that was built in the 90s. 
Um, so I just want to let everyone know that the deconstruction day is happening at Westside Park uh, this Saturday from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. And there are 440 fence pickets with people's names and messages and um, memories uh, on them that people uh, over 20 years ago that built the playground um, purchased in support of the project. And it would be wonderful if we could reconnect those with the people that they're important to. Um, so there is a full list of all the names on projectwestsidepark.com. And you can uh, see if there's one that you want to come and claim this Saturday. Okay, so as you heard, the deconstruction will begin on Saturday and they will be tearing down the wooden structure at Lowell School that have been there for a good amount of time. And uh, one of the reasons why they moved towards uh, getting rid of the wooden structure is because it was very cost ineffective, not to mention it would cost millions of dollars every couple of years just to refurbish the wood. And so they determined that they're going to replace it with a longer lasting uh, playground and have a better infrastructure for kids' playgrounds, all abilities and more. So that's kind of what the things that are happening within that. Uh, say goodbye to the old wooden playground. Uh, Gwen Jones during uh, council spoke on MRA and how they've been working towards affordable housing. So wheels are moving, but you know, at the same time, you know, it's the wheels of the government. People have not been tracking the MRA agenda for the last month or two. Um, I think a lot of policies have been articulated that probably coincide with what my colleague mentioned um, for URD2, which uh, is nearing the last stage of its life. Uh, I was really pleased to see that the MRA staff did a nine year exit plan that frankly focused on the things uh, that need to be focused on in terms of housing and infrastructure and um, projects that really benefit the common good. So I was really pleased with that. I read it, it's an excellent, it's an excellent um, exit plan. And that is the stage of life with a TIF district when you can then put money into the things that will not necessarily increase the tax base. So I hope people get a chance to read that nine year exit plan for URD2. And I believe it'll come to council in another month or two as a presentation. And for those of you who are not in the know, URD is the Urban Renewal District, and there's been a bunch of districts. They are basically were in place for the downtown Missoula, city of Missoula urban deal, in which you know section of Missoula would pay uh, a certain amount of taxes. So this urban renewal, this was before TIFs were being used to leverage developers to create the infrastructure that we have been using today. And honestly, uh, with TIF funding working for the public good, we can leverage development through tax and incentives and to create affordable housing. But those things take time because of, you know, the more cooks in the kitchen. Because, you know, when you have development happening, they have their plans, they have the mindset. And then you have it's like, why do you throw another thing in there too? And there's like, oh, we're going to have to, okay, let's do it. It's like, what do you think about this? It's like, oh, that sounds pretty good. I was like, wait, what about this thing? What, can you add this thing? And then, you know, that's usually kind of how it ends up happening. And developers, a lot of times they... Uh, most of the like a lot of times they like the tax incentives are amazing or great but if they come to a point in which you know they cause delays in construction that costs just amount of the same amount of money that would they would be saving in the end so a lot of times and of course um, one of the things um, in terms of housing uh, Mike Nugent uh, speaks about a little bit more about it I do feel um, that it's it's appropriate to uh, share um, the, the Bureau of Business and Economic Research at the University shared an article that I think was in the San Francisco Chronicle and it discussed um, Missoula in, in a group with several other cities of uh, a ratio of price increases over the last two years of 57.5% and inventory over that same time period has dropped 58%. So I think that when we're having housing conversations, it's really important that we recognize we have a housing issue all across our markets. And um, just because the development isn't, um, doesn't meet the HUD standards of affordability, doesn't mean that it's not crucial for Missoulians. So I think that we need, to, we need to make sure as we're talking about that, that we are recognizing that there are a lot of Missoulians struggling with housing right now. Yep, and it's not only about uh, finding a house, it's more about being able to afford the house. Um, 
mini solutions. Hey, it's hard all around, and if there was a magic wand, tax the rich. Um, way to ensure forms of stability, higher wages, and increase the housing stock, sustainable jobs. We can figure it out. Um, Jedi, or justice, equity, diversity, inclusion, reflected on Missoula's 90% white demographic, but Missoula uses Jedi program to look at the income inequality. Uh, and here's Gwen Jones with that. This is the data, and if Missoula didn't have issues, we'd be seeing different data. But not only within our city employees can we make progress in terms of doing better to figure out how to hire people and recruit people to better reflect our Missoula demographics, but also just looking at the one issue of poverty and how it relates um, across the board in terms of different demographic groups, there's a huge impact there. And we as city employees are here to serve and to make this place as best as possible for everyone who lives here. So doing this kind of training is a step forward in that direction and I'm very supportive of this contract. And the sad reality, based on our statistics alone, uh, one is enough. And even if one person was on city council, which doesn't uh, didn't represent the non-white uh, demographic, we 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 do it in a statistic statistic kind of way, but not necessarily in an actual way. So, and finally, um, um, uh, Sandra Vasica, who didn't support this program in the beginning because she thinks that this is a waste of taxpayers' money, and this is what she had to say about this. Thanks. Um, I spoke about this, oh gosh, community meetings were two weeks ago, um, so I won't go into um, a lot of length about it. But I am not in support of this tonight. Um, I think that to move past um, racism and sexism, we can't br make policies that we will hire or not hire someone be based on their sex or their race. So I think that this is a step in the wrong direction. Um, I thought that there are discrimination laws about this. Um, so. And also, just because they are um, ARPA qualified to use ARPA funds for this doesn't mean that we have to. It's still um, tax dollars and it's still um, the ARPA funds came out because of COVID. So I, I just I don't think it's an appropriate use of the ARPA funds, even though it is legally allowed. So um, those are just some of the reasons why I'm not going to be in support of this. Yep. So. Sandra thinks it's, uh, you know, it's legally allowed, but for Sandra Vasica, it's not uh, morally, uh, should be morally allowed an obligation with that. And I think this program has a lot of potential, but like many other programs, it seems like it throws money at a problem in an oversight committee just to come out with a statistic that we may or may not already know. Um, we're kind of hearing the same thing over and over again about sobering statistics that show us that many people in Missouri are in the same form of financial crisis without actually solving it. It kind of looks like we're uh, being right about our numbers and not being like, see, I told you things were bad. We know, we know. Uh, there, was, there were a lot of other items they spoke about um, in the post-meeting committee reports, but I'll let you dive into that yourself. Uh, that is if you're interested in a, a third of the meeting to do with sidewalks and who should pay, which I already uh, referred to in the beginning of the um, morning show and let's talk about committee meetings uh, land use and planning one of the big things that are happening is that there's some land up on their uh, west uh, green new drive um, is getting rezoning for development this is called greeno heights and on the uh, nearly 5.8 acre property located west of greeno park up the hills they're looking up to have upwards of 20 units on that a portion of property. Uh, for those of you wondering, uh, in the meeting not so long ago, uh, the concept of dwelling units represents how many uh, is considered living spaces, but this one is going to be basically five plus acres on a hill that would have uh, some lots, some land, and it's basically going to have some housing there, and you can expect the housing to be very expensive especially when you have such uh, words like as heights. When, it, when you think about heights, it's like, okay, that's probably going to be like another fifty to $100,000 per house just because of the name recognition. Um, so anyways, uh, David DeGrande with the City Development, and he gives a little uh, a, a look in exactly what you might expect from this rezoning. So this is what Dave DeGrande had to say. And it shows 20 residential lots that are proposed to be created, as well as a 27000 plus acre open space that contains the creek and the, the dense kind of vegetation, the big, beautiful ponderosa pines and, and things like that. Um, the lots range in size. Well, the, the property itself is 5.79 acres. The lots range in size from 6,670 feet to 9,617 feet. And the total density would be 3.87 dwelling units per acre 
after subtracting out the open space, 3.87 dwelling units per acre. Uh, the, the proposal includes dedicating additional right of way for Greeno Drive. So currently, Greeno Drive is located within a 30 foot easement. So within that easement, which is quite narrow, um, the road takes up most of it, the road and the shoulders take up almost all of it. Uh, the, the developer is proposing to meet the city standards. A, a road like this is considered an urban collector and that typically would have an 80 foot right of way. And so the road right now is contained in a 30 foot easement. And so the developer is responsible under our subdivision regulations for bringing the road up to city standards along the portion of, of the subdivision property. And so the developer is proposing to dedicate right of way that would equal 40 feet from the center line of the road. So in the hatched area, Along along Greeno, this is where uh, the subdivider is proposing to dedicate additional right of way. All right, so basically that's kind of like the whole uh, idea of what they want to do there. Um, I really can't say much more of that. Um, rezoning is a tool that, when used, can create a square hole for a square peg. But this square peg is not guaranteed. This property owner, um, it's a private property owner, remember, so a lot of the area that they're going to be selling, the rezoning is to basically be allowed to create a higher housing stock, but also reflect kind of like the neighborhood nearby. So this is going to create some more housing, but it's not going to be creating the more affordable housing that is uh, sorely needed in the city of Missoula. But at the same time, um, if you you got to you got to be able to uh, look at the the the, the longer picture, um, in, like the further picture from further away. I don't know. I, what, what, I'm, what I'm getting to is like you increase the housing stock, you increase the the market. You know, you have more houses, you have less demand, and you know a lot of people want to move to Missoula. It seems like it just seems like a lot of houses are being bought up as well. But at the same time, like I keep on thinking to myself, like going over this over and over in my head it's just like because you know you always hear stories about how you have these major corporations and you know blackstone is a good example about buying up properties and basically renting out houses whenever i see a house being rented by a not owner a, not a landlord it gets uh, it raises my eyebrows a little bit more so it's something that we should also uh, kind of look into as well because um one of the uh, major uh uh, pro uh, people who've been buying up a lot of lots of lands for development is the Carlisle Group um, in the United States. Um, uh, they did a, John Oliver, uh, HBO, uh, last week tonight did a story about the Carlisle Group buying up a lot of uh, trailer park properties. And I, I'm sorry, I'm going off on a tangent here, but it just kind of makes me think that we have a lot of housing stock, but we just don't lo have a lot of actual people buying the housing. So there's going to be an interesting uh, reckoning coming at some point. but. For right now, it kind of seems like this seems seems to be kind of going under the radar. So I, just keep your eye on it, keep your eyes on it for sure. But um, let's move on to Public Works. Uh, the Mo the Mullen Build Project wanted a uh, twenty-three point nineteen million dollars in two thousand nineteen money for that major project through federal money and created phasing to uh, build as the money came in. Flash forward to today, costs are up and the city is looking for more grants to pay the money out. It's also in a phase so they can uh, build. As, as the money comes in, Aaron Wilson, Infrastructure and Mobility Planning, talks about how they plan to raise the rest. But it is a continuation of what was previously billed and before billed was referred to as TIGER. So these are large federal grant programs that have been around for over a decade now. Um, Missoula has received several of these. Uh, one was the Missoula to Lolo Trail. Um, we also received $13 million for this Mullen, what we call the Mullen Build Project uh, back in 2019. And, and what we're putting together for this round of raise funding um, is a continuation of that Mullen Build Project. So building on the $13 million that we received, which was only a portion of that grant request in 2019, I think we had asked for $23 million, received 13, and so there's a gap in funding. Um, and we've had lots of conversations about that at, at council over the years in terms of how to fill that gap. And um, this is one of the ways. Okay, so RAISE is the new term for it, and it was utilizing the Americans Rescue Plan. Uh, from Tiger to Build Grants, they utilize uh, federal funds um, in a competitive market to get the biggest bang for their buck. Uh, grants take some time, but they are hoping that RAISE, aka Rebuilding America's Infrastructure with Sustainability and Equity, the Infrastructure Bill secured funds, Tiger and Build are your grandparents' grant. Now get ready for RISE. Aaron talks about where we are today, in particular with um, the project. 
Um, what this map shows are all the various project elements that we'd be constructing. Um, as a reminder, this is an area west of Reserve between Mullen and Broadway. The 2019 funding gave us enough to build out essentially the, the core street elements for a couple of different phases, including Mary Jane Boulevard north and south. So completing the connection of Mary Jane from Broadway to Mullen. Uh, we have elements of George El Elmer South, so from uh, an extended England Boulevard down to Mullen Road. Uh, okay, so um, I'm going to kind of take over for a second here. Sorry, guys. But um, as you can see, these blue numbers, 2, 8, 1, all this stuff, the blue ones are going to be the very the first ones that are going to be built, first and foremost. Future funding, as you can see from the orange, um, you see all these different elements, different things, connectivity, George Elmer Drive. You know, you're, you're building a huge neighborhood and additional roads and different development. You're just going to be expanding more and more to have a very large kind of suburban area for a lot of these houses that are going to be built in this particular area. And it's going to be very interesting to kind of see how this kind of uh, takes uh, takes hold. Um, but I just kind of wanted to leave you with that. They're always looking for more money uh, for this build grant. This is uh, mostly for infrastructure and building better roads and better sidewalks and basically building a, uh, a housing development that is uh, suitable. And it's not just like putting houses on plots of land in which, you know, the the neighborhood you know is going to be dealing with a lot more uh, through traffic especially mary jane boulevard that's going to be built it's going to help alleviate a lot of the traffic that goes off of flynn lane for sure because it's going to be an earlier turn off if you're going down, down mullen and also the george elmer drive is also going to be expanded as well so if you're familiar with this area um, it is going to be a huge impact to the population of the city of missoula it's 54 plus acres of uh, lands lots dwelling units uh, various apartment buildings just a lot of things that are going to be kind of phased in for high density to low density it's going to be a major development it's going to be ridiculous so they're going to be moving forward and they're very happy about how things are going forward and it seems like with all these new infrastructure bills it seems like this actually is very feasible and very plausible in Missoula's future to utilize this f federal funding moving forward. Admin and finance, hey, this is, uh, I, I'm going to kind of go give you a brief overview of this four hour meeting, uh, but I suggest you guys watch it yourself. They really went over a lot of uh, housing, um, about how much money the city is going to be working with in terms of permitting and working with developers and trying to find an easier way to uh, uh, grant permits to developers to uh, have them build faster than they need to build and at the same time they're also uh, trying to increase the expansion of the mobile crisis support team so the mobile crisis unit was created a couple years back ago during the uh, pandemic and using some of the uh, the cares act money to kind of help launch it and they kind of took up some elements from spokane washington and about how they handle some people who have mental health crises in the city of missoula being able to do uh, touch base with them and so far they've been able to field uh, 13 uh, uh, 1,300 calls have been made to support Missoulians in times of mental health crises, and um, 676 clients have been served, and the initial call, and initial calls on average have been about one hour and 25 minutes long. You know, it's easy to say that it has been very effective uh, at uh, helping those in need, and also a lot of times um, when you call 911, they want to like, you know, get the reports. So, you know it's mostly about just kind of like reporting what happened and just moving forward and just not really giving you a more of a soft touch and being like a good hand on the shoulder it's uh when it comes to response times uh you know this this has been kind of a a big deal and uh, they're looking to expand it a little bit further but they just don't have the money and they've been utilizing whatever services that they have there they're doing some additional emt training but for the most part the fire department has basically been the sore this uh the sole source for having that uh, lighter touch comparatively to the police department who can uh, alleviate some of their uh, time to uh, better serve the community of Missoula as well. So also during this meeting, they presented the city's plan to innovate the planning process for development. So far with the money rates raised on the developers, they were able to get some more staff to help with shortening the permitting process. Uh, developers' biggest enemy is delays. Uh, overall, this meeting is a precursor to the budget committee meeting. I'm going to say this again. This is a precursor to the budget committee meeting of the whole, which is a very important part in drafting about how Missoula pays for everything. And this is important for people who are just like, oh, why are you spending money on this? Why are you spending money on this? This is the best time to get involved and to give your public comment and be like, hey, you know, maybe you should approach it by this approach. Maybe you should think about doing this. Maybe you should think about cutting that. 
uh, for this, and therefore, so what? And somewhat, um, Missoula's tax base is only going to get gr grow bigger and bigger as it goes along. So there's going to be a lot of money and a lot of things moving forward. And so far, they're copying and pasting what they already know that they need to keep the lights on in the downtown Missoula area. But for the most part, they want to see about what other services they can use to expand. And so this is a good opportunity for people to really get involved in curve uh, how the city plans to spend a lot of their money. So if you want to uh, learn more about this meeting and more, you can go to ci.missoula.mt.us for everything Missoula and maybe get a little, get that pothole in your neighborhood filled. The city of Missoula has a great chip and seal project that helps you, uh, that helps. But you gotta, you know, you gotta let them know. I mean, it's, uh, they'll get paid anyways and we might as well get them to work for it. So potholes. Get them filled up. All you got to do is go to ci.msoil.mta.us for more information. All right, so that pretty much does it for my city council report. I am going to uh, throw up a art clip for you guys. And here is uh, from um, Romy Stuckard, um, Within and Without, featured at the Missoula Art Museum. Well, guys, speaking of art, it is April 1st. That's not only April Fool's, but um, I'm not fooling you. It's uh, your first Friday art guide for the city of Missoula. We're kicking things off uh, happening in... Um, uh, blah, 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 gotta go to my notes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Here's First Friday. We're kicking these off with Make Believe. Radius Gallery is delighted to present a new ceramic work by uh, Yeon Soon Kim, originally from South Korea. Korea uh, Kim is a, currently a long-term resident at the Archie Bay Foundation in Helena, Montana. Kim's brilliant, conceived improvisationally, um, decorated vessels weave uh, sprightly figures and bold design elements into it energetic, colorful compositions and give expressions to the artist's inner life and worldly observations. And you can find out more by going to the Radius Gallery. All these events are happening from 5 to 8 p.m. Um, congruently downtown in various locations throughout the city of Missoula during First Friday. Up next, we got Sunflower for Solidarity. This is going to be an art show at Harvest. Harvest is hosting a very special First Friday healing arts event. And this is going to be at the Wholeness Center in honor of the support of Ukraine. Local artists have created Sunflower Flowers for solidarity pieces and portions of all proceeds will be donated to the Global Giving Ukraine Crisis Relief Fund. And, and join them for a special Sunflowers for Solidarity Peace and Resistance art show and share the love. Come together and heal. Up next, we got Artist Shop. So this is going to be like an Artist Shop slash Clay, uh, Clay, uh, Clay Studio of Missoula kind of crossover event. Missoula Clay Studio Wood Kiln. Class firing fall from 2021 to spring 2022. The show runs from April 1st through the 30th. This is a publicly invited to the opening reception today. Um, and this is going to be at the Artist Shop. And then up next, we got Pot Sketch. And this is going to be at... Clay Studio of Missoula. So this is going to be like, you know, uh, one place is going to have uh, the, the clay. This one's going to have the art a bit, uh, inspired by clay. So see all the amazing pot sketches 2022 auction work in person. Auction works will be on display at the Clay Studio of Missoula, Studio of Missoula from April 1st to the April 20th. So this is a not a rotating gallery. This is a 
uh, an auction gallery, so this may be the last time this all these art pieces will be together in the same place. Um, and then the art auction and bidding process uh, will begin April 23rd Potsgets Gala event, and you can find out more information by going to their website through the Clay Studio of Missoula. Finally, we got Brian McGuire in the light of consciousness. Um, Brian is an artist who was involved in the civil rights movement in Northern Ireland in this 1970s. This show is an overview of human rights focused paintings and includes images that may not be, uh, suitable, might be, not be suitable for sensitive audiences. The exhibit will feature violent human right abuses and ugly side of human race. Consider this a warning before the event. This is going to be at the Missouri Museum and this will be happening in one of their main galleries. So you guys can check that out. Um, and you can find out more information by going to MissoulaArtsMuseum.org. All right, so that pretty much does it for your first Friday events. Um, MCAT, we usually do um, some events on Fridays and Saturdays. Fridays, we have Adobe programs where we do Photoshop and Premiere classes. On Saturdays, we have our orientation. We have our Saturday drop-ins. The library has their Tiny Tales and Story Time happening from um, 10.30, both on Friday and Saturdays, in the art box and also the program room for kids on the second floor. They uh, At around noon today they have yarns and watercolor. Uh, they have um, Spectrum Discovery Center has um, science exhibits starting at 10 a.m. going until 6 p.m. And, and one of the things that are also happening um, in Missoula as well besides the library is the First Presbyterian Church Estate and Rummage Sale. So happening today and tomorrow you guys get to check out the First Presbyterian Church. They're having a rummage sale. Get involved with that. Also, Lifelong Learning Center is doing introduction to pickleball and, and doing more pickleball-based uh, activities later on in the day as well. So if you are a mom and you're trying to uh, work out with a young child, Stoller, Stroller Strides is the, is, the, or, uh, is the event for you, and Tool Park is the place to be at 9.30 every Friday. Stroller Strides is a great place for women to work out with their strollers and get involved with a 60-minute workout is compri compromise of strength training, cardio, and core restoration, and they meet at Tool Park. Um, Missoula Food Bank and Meal Distribution, they don't uh, discriminate on your economic um, advantages or disadvantages. Missoula Food Bank is open at 10 a.m. today and they're open at various times during the week. You can go in there and you can shop some fresh uh, nutritious food and it's at the Missoula Food Bank which is off of Wyoming Street. Um, anytime, all the time. Um, not anytime because they have designated hours but anyways uh, you, 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 you look that up yourself. Let's move on. Um, you have an adult ballet class if you're interested in ballet or just uh, getting introduced to ballet as an adult you can go to Mismo Gymnastics. It starts at 4 p.m. Environmental Humanities Film Screening 2040. At the University of Montana, 2040 journey begins the order winning director uh, Damon Gamow. That sugar film, um, he w w a couple years back, motivated by concerns about the planet his four year old daughter would inherit, Damon embarks on a global journey to meet innovators and change makers in the areas of economic technology and civil society, agriculture, education, and sustainability. Uh, this is a documentary on f figuring out how to deal with global warming and keep leaving the world a better place than we found it. A beach House is going to be uh, a band playing at the Wilma tonight. Live music with the Benevolence is going to be at Crank Hansen Public House. First Friday music show at the Monks. Josh Farmer Band is going to be at the Union Club. Just a little bunch of fun events happening for your Friday night. But unfortunately, I have pretty much uh, come to an end to, of my morning show. There's a lot of other events as well. If you're interested in finding out more information, go to MissoulaEvents.net. MissoulaEvents.net. What's happening in Missoula? Just go to MissoulaEvents.net. Leave me alone. Anyways, uh, <laughs> that's how I talk to people. Anyways, uh, I want to thank you guys for joining me. And for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Don't get pranked.